Hello, good evening and welcome to The Stance live here on TV3. It's our weekly program where we bring together our journalists and uh, newsmaker, oh, our journalists, I beg your pardon, uh, as well as uh, reporters to share their views on running issues, making headlines throughout the week. Uh, you can watch us live on your DSTV channel 279 and on Facebook Live. Tonight, I will be joined by Martin Asiri Data, a news anchor and also co-host of Sunrise Breakfast Show on 3FM 92.7 as well as Godfrey Tanam, who is a multimedia journalist and our court correspondent. But before we delve into matters for tonight, let's begin with the local news highlights. The whole district court has ordered the arrest of the leader of the Homeland Study Group Foundation, Charles Kwame Kujoji, and two others over the unlawful declaration of parts of Ghana as a sovereign state. Five other members of the group were remanded on charges of treason felony. Meanwhile, the Kenesha District Court has ordered the Bureau of National Investigations, the BNI, to hand over ACP Dr. Benjamin Agojo, accused of plotting to destabilize the country, to the Inspector General of Police. ACP Dr. Agojo says his interdiction has been in the custody of the BNI. A fact-finding committee set up to investigate two University of Ghana lecturers has found a, has established a prima facie evidence against them following a BBC expose titled Sex for Great. Professor Ransford Jampun and Dr. Paul Butako are to face a disciplinary committee of the university. A release signed by the Public Affairs Director of the University, Stella Amwa, indicated the two lecturers breached the university's code of conduct and statutes as amended. Also tonight, government is to meet the National House of Chiefs over the yes or no vote campaign controversy by some members of the House. This was disclosed by the Chief Tansi and Religious Affairs Minister in Accra on Wednesday. All right, so that's all for news making headlines on the local front. Let's find out what's been happening on the international front today and the leader of Israel's Blue and White Party, Benny Gantz, has said he cannot form a coalition government making a third election in a year more likely. Now, Gantz was given a mandate by the president last month after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also failed to secure a majority in parliament. Lawmakers now have 21 days to nominate a candidate with majority support. Also, Islamist uh, militia men killed at least 19 people overnight in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The assailants from the Allied Democratic Forces, a Ugandan Islamist group, also kidnapped several people and tortured a Catholic church, uh, tortured a Catholic church during two separate attacks about 35 kilometers apart. Elsewhere, Islamic State West African affiliates claimed responsibility on Wednesday for an attack on an army patrol in northern Mali that killed 30 soldiers. Dozens of other soldiers were wounded in the ambush on Monday in Tabankot in Mali's Gao region. The attack was the third major strike against Malian forces in the last two months by jihadist groups. And finally, Britain's, uh, Britain's Prince Andrew has stepped down from public duties. He said the controversy surrounding his ill-judged association with late U.S. financier Jeffrey Epstein had, had caused major disruption to the royal family's work. Andrew, Queen Elizabeth's second son, denies an allegation that, the, that he had sex with a 17-year-old girl procured for him by his friend Epstein, who killed himself in a U.S. prison while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. All right, that's all for uh, international news highlights. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook, also live on your DSTV channel 279. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. Now, 
Eligible Ghanaian voters will on December 17 decide on a proposed amendment to Article 55.3 to determine whether political parties should be allowed to participate in district-level elections or not. Already various groups, including political parties, have all taken different stance on the matter. Meanwhile, the governing New Patriotic Party is canvassing for a yes vote. The opposition National Democratic Congress wants Ghanaians to vote against the proposed amendment. Question is, what vote is in the best interest of Ghanaians? We'll be taking some sounds shortly and I'm pretty sure I'll also be introducing uh, my guest in the studio. <laughs> Only 1.5 million liters of water is here. Yeah, so there to report a high number of people arrested during the Nambalish farm. Some of them have started saying, may you that day Sambe Wami. But was it as simple as that? Only 1.5 million liters of water yeah, so there to report a high number of people arrested during the Nambalish farm. Some of them have started saying, may you that day Sambe Wami. But was it as simple as that? All right, welcome back to The Stands Live here on TV3. It's our weekly show that uh, gives us the opportunity as um, uh, news reporters and journalists to also share our views and perspectives on running national issues. Tonight on the program, I'll be joined by Martin Asidio, that is a news anchor here at TV3 and also uh, co-host of Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Also, Godfrey Tanam is our court correspondent, also a multimedia journalist. Both gentlemen will join me shortly for some discussion. But before that, the New Patriotic Party, the NPP, on Monday described the National Democratic Congress says possession to campaign for a no vote in the upcoming referendum as unpatriotic betrayal to multi-party democracy. John Boydou, who is the party's general secretary, uh, has been explaining his views. This they have done throughout the many engagements, conferences, symposiums that have been held on the referendum involving all major political parties in this country. That is why all the political parties, civil society groups, the media and the general public all appear surprised, confused, and even hoodwinked by the NDC abrupt U-turn last Tuesday. The only thing that can explain the NDC unexpected U-turn is that they are fully aware of the difficult task of getting the amendment through without a consensus. They knew very well, but pretended they were in favor until this last minute. A yes vote will strengthen our multi-party democracy consistent with our constitution. A yes vote will strengthen our system of decentralized local government by providing a coordinated and organized political system. In a related development, the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, John Sidi Nketiah, says despite campaigning for no in the upcoming referendum, his party will not mind engaging the NPP over other possible outcomes of the exercise. I don't remember this government mm. or MPP in government reaching out to engage us in anything about this okay. referendum. Talking about so engagement. Don't let mm -hmm. them be... Uh, deluding themselves. Mm. Now they are they are they are forced to now be talking about pleading with us and all that because they know they can't do it alone, and that is why John. Uh, yes. So it. let's look at. Uh, so they, what about the areas mm -hmm. where they, they 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 were capable of doing it alone? Mm. How many of, of such instances have they consulted? Mm. And how how uh, uh, less important those issues are? Are you prepared to engage government on this? If the government is prepared to engage us, why not? If they are prepared to engage, you would engage them. <laughs> yes, because that is the beauty of democracy. But you see, don't cry, don't be talking about democracy only where you think that uh, uh, certain things will favor you and where others don't favor you, that one you don't think. All right, so you hear the views of both the NPP and the NDC on the upcoming referendum uh, here on uh, TV3. My name is Parkus Yassari. So quickly, let me just introduce to you Martin Sidi Data, who is 
a broadcast journalist, news anchor, and also co-host of Sunrise Morning Show on 3FM 92.7. Martin, good to have you. It's been a while. Yes. Godfrey Tanam is a multimedia journalist and also our co correspondent live right here on TV3. Godfrey, good to have you. Right. Thanks, right. gentlemen, for your time. Um, we cannot start this whole discussion. Um, it's our show. You yes, know that. Certainly. Yeah. Without talking about the breaking news today in the world of uh, football, <laughs> world of soccer. Jose Mourinho yeah. is going to Tottenham. Tottenham. And I know you're excited about that. I am uh, pretty much excited about it because mm. I, I think uh, Mourinho has proven um, without a doubt everywhere he's gone, he's won a trophy. Uh, Pochettino has done very well. Five years at um, Tottenham Hotspur. He's done so well that he's taking them to the Champions League final. Mm. Unfortunately, within that five-year uh, spate, he's not been able to deliver any silverware. Mm. And I think that Tottenham feel they are within that level of at least having some silverware. Or, or if not for anything, they should have at least one. Trophy. And you think Mourinho and that is, is what the man to Mourinho do that is going to focus on. Mm. He will hammer it at least if he doesn't get anything. Maybe the FA Cup. He will take. We'll it see that. about that, Godfrey. I don't know you to be a football enthusiast. I, I, I'm, I'm not really. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good, but what I know is that uh, when it comes to uh, star coaches, you see Mourinho there. You know? So yeah. yeah. So definitely, I believe that. Uh, with the lessons he's learned over the years, he's going to really perform over there. And definitely he'll, 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 he'll put in some experiences uh, in place and make sure that... And already the, the fan base is growing. Exactly. Right here in Ghana exactly, and all over the world. Exactly, you know, exactly. Now Though, Tottenham suddenly is becoming yeah. a favourite of many people. Yeah, it was trending. Moreno moving to Tottenham was uh, number one trend in the UK um, since the rumour started. And today when it was confirmed... It's high number, rocket, and then their fan base has grown. Their exactly. Twitter followership Amazing. has shot right. up. They have at least about eight hundred thousand new followers in the last twenty-four oh hours. Oh my word! That's the, the Jose Moreno effect. Oh my <laughs> word! If you're not a football yeah. enthusiast, you got to start following football <laughs> because I know even our CEO is now a Liverpool yes, fan. She's a crazy yeah. Liverpool supporter. <laughs> All right, so let's delve into our discussion for today, and it has to do with the referendum, the upcoming referendum in December. There's been a lot of back and forth between the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress. Very recently, the National House of Chiefs also waded into it, and there appears to be some kind of um, um, confusion within the <coughs> Chief Chancellor Institution. Um, we know also of interest groups, other lawyers who have uh, been campaigning for a yes or no vote. What is really going on, Godfrey? What's your own perspective on this matter? I, I think uh, it is not only uh, about the yes and no uh, uh, proponents. We also have other groups. We have those who think that it should be postponed and those who also think that uh, it should be cancelled totally. Which, I mean, they believe that it's needless to go uh, for the referendum. But for me, I, I think the uh, arguments of the yes proponents Beautiful ideas, and it is so it's beautiful. Whatever they, they say is is what we want to to feel in our democracy. And if we extend it to the local level, that'll be fine. And what the no proponents are also saying, beautiful. But I think uh, uh, what is happening now, especially with the National House of Chiefs and all those people, interest groups coming in here, is really intensifying the argument of the no proponents. Because I don't know the day. I believe that. The National House of Chiefs wouldn't have had the confusion they are going through right now if NDC and MPP had not taken a stance. Let's assume that NDC had decided to, to, to campaign for yes, as the NPP is doing. I don't think what is happening at the National House of Chiefs would, would have happened. Godfrey, this will be your preliminary remarks. Martin, <laughs> what, what are your preliminary yeah. comments on this issue? Um, I think that... Uh, Clearly, the discussion, I am happy that um, the entire country seems to be showing interest in this uh, December 17 election. Again, it stems from the fact that political parties are involved. We've known over time that any time political parties are involved in any, any activity, it whips up the interest of the ordinary Ghanaian or the ordinary voter. Um, three weeks ago, very little was heard about the referendum, and it was just a yes campaign that was gradually sweeping through the airwaves until the new patriotic, in fact, until an article by Sam Saladia. Yes, I heard Sam say, you know, yes, you know, on was the, one of the first people that, you know, drew people's attention to wait, they are campaigning that we should all go and vote yes, but have we considered what the situation will be like if 
we voted no. Or have you thought about why there is a campaign for yes? What about the no alternative? And then it started drawing people's attention to the alternative of yes. And that was a no. Then the NDC also joined in. And then some key voices or interest parties have also released statements or short uh, public education sort of to get people aware of what exactly is going to happen. Now, I think we are missing a very vital point. Which is what? Three things are going to happen on December 17. But there seems to be a focus on just mm -hmm. one, which is the referendum. There are going to be two other elections on that day. So we are actually expected to vote for our unit assembly, uh, our district assembly members, our unit committee members, and then the referendum. But the first two, very little attention is given to it, and everybody is talking about vote yes or vote no, and the parties are all focused on that. Now, the challenge for me ha has been the fact that the NCCE, which is the state agency mandated to educate or raise awareness or create awareness about such a national exercise, the NCCE, have failed or have done very little. In fact, it was up until last week that they started showing advertisements on TV and then in some newspapers and getting other people to try and educate the public. Very little is known about these other two things, which are also very key to our local level elections. Now, if you want to talk about just the, the referendum, I believe that both yes and no uh, advocates or campaigners have legitimate uh, reasons why they're asking for us to vote yes or no, and, and uh, justifiably so. But the mere fact that majority are now getting to know what we are supposed to do and what yes, voting yes means and what voting no means is an unfortunate position we, have, we find ourselves in. I, I will come back to try and put this discussion a bit into perspective, but Godfrey, let me take your remarks again because I, I noticed you want to say something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was making the argument that the, uh, uh, the positions of uh, both uh, I mean, NDC and MPP uh, have really in intensified the argument. It's, there's, it's, it's obvious. And I believe that because they've taken different stance, that is why this argument has been intensified. Mm. And uh, you see, if we decide that NDC is campaigning for, for yes, and then MPP to, I mean, as they are doing, they are also ca uh, campaigning for, for, for yes, mm. the National House of Chiefs would have come out and they would have come out with a clean sheet. They would tell us that this is what we believe in. And nobody would have come out to say that, oh, we believe in this, and the, 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 the other person also say we believe in the other, other thing. Because at the end of the day, because of the politicization of the whole thing, that is why there's argument all over. Mm. Okay, so let me try and put this whole matter into perspective. Mm. What are the real issues? I mean, what are people debating about? This whole business about yes, no, what are the issues? So if I understand clearly, we've been told, per some of the commercials that have been played over the period, is that... We want to empower people at the, at the local and assembly level we, uh, to be able to elect their own MMDCEs mm. from what has been uh, the usual over the years where we see the president appointing DCs and MMDCs. <coughs> I do not think that this is merely a matter of just whether or not people should elect or the position should be a, an appointed one. Because if it were, we do not need to go for a referendum on that. Mm. Okay. Article 243 is already before the House. Mm -hmm. It's been laid before the yeah. House. And that lies squarely in the bosom of, of, of Parliament to pass and to uh, amend that. And we do not need a referendum for that to happen. And every political party, I mean, if, if I'm right, the NDC and both, both the NDC and the NPP have over the years talked about the need for us to yes. elect our own mm district chief executives and MMDCs. Right. However, however, the bone of contention here, if you ask me, is whether or not to make it partisan. Mm. And that's why we're, we're, we're going on that this. Is a, that is this, the main this, argument this, this, now. This, uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. That's to amend Article 55.3 yeah, so, exactly. mm. to make it partisan, to allow for political parties mm. to get involved in, 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 in campaigning and in sponsoring People already, the constitution frowns against political party involvement and participation in the local and district assembly elections. Mm -hmm. And that's how come we as a people, and, and, and it makes room for we as a people to decide through a, refer a referendum to change it. And I think that's what we are going to be doing. And a lot of people are not really 
mindful of, of this. Fact. Yes. Yeah. All we know is that, oh, we're going to... It's not just about electing... You see, you that, know, that, or, 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 that point you make, Pastor, mm. actually um, merges with where I, 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 um, I landed, mm. which had to do with the public education. Mm. The mm. public, the sensitization fact, is fact, about a week low. or two ago, there was a, um, I think there was a survey conducted which said that um, you know, very few people were aware of exactly yeah, what was yeah, going to happen. Gonna happen. Yes. Yes. Don't do it. And, and so, so. Um, just when we decided that we wanted to vote for our MMDCs, mm. Or we wanted to allow political party involvement. Mm. That was when the NCC should have kick uh, started their national sensitization exercise. Mm. You know, then by now that political parties are involved, people would have had a fair understanding at mm. least of whether or not to mm. vote, why we are going to be having a referendum in the first place, mm. and then also why there is the need whether or not they want political parties to be involved there. People are actually saying, and it is until recently that a few are getting the clarity, mm. majority thought that we were going to vote yes for the power to elect, elect. MMDC. Yeah. It goes beyond not, that. Yes, yeah. it is actually not that. That one, Parliament is parliament, going to... Yeah, Parliament can do that. Give two for three. It's, it's already in Parliament. Yeah. 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 So that one is not entrenched. The entrenched clause... is 55-3. In, yes, it's the 55-3, which needs the country to come together. And it says that at least about... 40% of the total voter population yeah. should have come out to vote. Mm. And 75% of that 40% should, should have, have voted, voted yes. yes. Mm. Then we can say and, that... And, and that's where that the difficulty is coming, because it. you have such a, a key um, interest group, a political party like the NDC, canvassing for a no vote. Yeah. And, and today I'm hearing the president uh, call for uh, stakeholder participation, consultation, consultation you know, to, 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 uh, to help us arrive at a consensus. I, I yeah. hear that Joseph Sidi are also calling for that. But See, why have we waited yeah. till now? Why but, has but I, been... I, I think, you know, uh, uh, Martin was talking about uh, uh, the NCC not doing its work. I mm. think sometimes we have to also look at their complaints. They mm. talk about uh, financial difficulties. Yes. I'm afraid remember... go for, we've got to go for a break. When we return, <laughs> I will tell you what the Deputy Minister of Local Government, Obi uh, Amor, has been saying. And then we'll also try and, you know, dissect the issues that have been raised by the National House of Chiefs, why there's that difficulty. Togba Afeda, who represents, is actually the, uh, is the president uh, of the National president House of National Chiefs, uh, came out with a statement. We've also seen a counter statement by the Ochehene uh, and so much confusion. We'll be back shortly. Right, welcome back to The Stance Live here on TV3. Uh, we're talking about the upcoming uh, referendum and district assembly elections. Um, let's quickly talk about uh, the Deputy Minister of Local Government, Obi Amwa, who's hinted um, that the President may suspend the upcoming referendum upon advice of some stakeholders, including the Catholic Bishops' Conference. People should be mindful of the fact that a lot has been put in. Mm. So, if we take a decision, meaning that if the head of state and head of go uh, government takes a decision, that given the circumstances, the referendum should be put on hold. We should be mindful of the fact that expenditure has taken place. Because mm. positions were taken and assurances were given and no objections have been raised until now. And if representing things that, oh, if House of Chiefs, there appears to still be some differences. Oh, GJ, what do you think? Oh, um, Christian Council, Muslim Federation, all these major groups, what do you think? If at the end of the day, the major groups all say that president, we advise you don't go ahead. The president comes to broadcast to the whole world that after consultations with these groups, they've advised that we should hold on. We will all follow. They have to be arranged to transport these ballot papers across the country. Mm -hmm. And with the three tier thing, it's even more difficult, so they have to start early enough. So if the president of the republic comes back and announces that the referendum has been put on hold because we want to build more consensus. Mm. He would have done that, but nobody should blame him for cost. Just as people are saying that uh, if you go, there's not much consultation, so if you go, there will be cost. If they stop to, there would have been cost. All right, so you heard the Deputy Local Government Minister, Obi Amwa, in that interaction with my colleague, uh, Winston Amwa, on Sunrise Morning Show. That's 3FM 92.7. Guys, so uh, there's just a hint that there's 
the likelihood that the president may call for a postponement of the referendum, that is going to be really... really I, I do not think it will happen. Uh, I mean, top of my head, I do not think that will happen where the, they are going to put... They are going to suspend the, 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 the uh, referendum and uh, DA elections. And I'm saying so on the basis of the fact that gradually the involvement of the political parties is increasing public um, public awareness of what's happening. Mm. People are getting to understand it. Mm. Now, the fear is if we go to the polls and we vote no, then government would have wasted resources mm. in trying to organize these elections. Mm. That is where the fear is. Mm. But quite apart from that, I think that the NPP... Uh, you know, stretch out and I'm asking the NDC to join forces mm. so they can all sing but you with one that chorus. This, 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 if this, they do this that. collaboration, this consultation would have taken place way before, you know, the, the idea was conceived. I, I think uh, the uh, difficulty is that this was not anticipated. Mm. What is happening now? The dissenting opinion exactly. of the it was not anticipated of the because that a political party will say, I do not want or we do not want a local because level election. Because if to you be, listen to, to some of the, if yeah. you listen to some of the uh, comments that uh, some of the NDC people mm. made during a, a, a stakeholder meeting mm. at the civil society organizations and mm. all those, you realize that they were actually preaching that yeah. For the yes vote. For the yes vote. Mm. Yeah, and as I answer mm. recently when they came out to say that mm. that is not what they, 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 they actually wanted. Mm. But individually and uh, even... Uh, well, but you, you, you cannot begrudge them for that. What they're saying is that they are not against the election of MMDC. But that is not a bone of contention but here. It is not. No, you see, there's yeah, a fear, yeah, yeah, there's no, a fear no, that no, if They're saying that they are not against the election of MMDCs. However, they are against the politicization of elections. And that is where the referendum the comes in. That is yes. why we're having a and, referendum. And that's why they're saying that they do not agree with that. But I'm saying that we could have consulted better. We could have agreed on... Okay, so, I mean, mm. uh, information we've been able to pick from the vineyard mm. indicate that there was... Uh, and we all knew that uh, even on the floor of parliament, mm. the majority and the minority sang the same chorus. There was the agreement and, and that... And they knew fully yes. what they were going through. Yes, yes, they knew. They knew. So, so, is this some kind of a leadership so or it was... It? It was quite a surprise. Mm. Even the, the local government minister um, uh, has also expressed same similar surprise. And a number of people who had consulted with both parties mm. all have expressed some kind of uh, shock at the NDC's sudden U-turn that they are going to if, take a if, no if government, position. If government were to go ahead with this and it turned out that, you know, the no votes... Like people actually go out and you vote know, no? Yes. Will that be testing the popularity it, of government. You know, you know Martin, Martin, was, Martin was saying <laughs> yeah. that the fear is that the government will go in for this and then get uh, no, uh, no vote, vote mm. which I think shouldn't be because you are testing the opinions of the people. You want them to express their opinion. Would they also be testing to decide what to do at the district level? That is, that is a, you see, in, uh, in a way, in, in a way for me, what I, think, what, I, what I think is that definitely in a way, the opposition will take advantage of that. To also test their own popularity. Exactly, because I don't know that they will say that, okay, you campaign for yes, mm. and we campaign for no, and no one. Mm. So, in, 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 invariably, 2020, something big yeah. is going to happen People to are us. Going to use, I, I mean, yeah, you understand? Mm, it's like, okay, mm. they are supporting So, so government has to be careful how it, it, it goes about this whole... But, but into the, let's look at the substance, the merits of this whole discussion. Look, the people who say, why are you arguing against... A yes vote already elections at the district assembly level are already politicized you know so 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 what's the difficulty how but politicized you don't have is it yeah but you don't you don't you can't prove you that. can't prove that unfortunately mm. we can't prove that mm. but we know that we know that there are politicians who are sponsoring uh, people to, yeah, we, to, to, we, to go we know uh, that to become assembly and, members and, yes, and, and they all that. do yeah. that behind the scenes mm. and nobody knows that that is mm. what is happening mm. that is the reason why so so you, so, you, so you think that legitimizing it will create problems no we, we, i do not think that there's going to be a problem if we allow political party <laughs> involvement mm. at the grassroots mm. however will, will that make there will are that going make, to will be that will that make the leaders more accountable to the people and in answering that question you've got to look at what pertains with members of parliament the are question. they accountable to the people or they're just they accountable, accountable to the people who the delegates who elect them into office Le before before he comes in let me just mm. Uh, lay this caveat that um, when we, so if we do go to the polls on mm. December 17th mm. and we all vote yes, mm. that is if 
forty percent of the voter population turnout and seventy five percent of that mm. number do vote yes, it is going to now kick into effect the the processes of what we should put in place to ensure that the problems we have all spoken about at the parliamentary election level does not trickle down to the local government. How so is that possible? Very, no, no, it is possible. So it's mm. not going to be at the next election that we are going to start voting for MMDC. It could actually take between uh, a year and three years before when everybody is sure that all these checks and balances but, are but in coming, place. But coming back to the chiefs, we are going to start their voting. difficulty is that this is likely to diminish the authority of, of chieftaincy at the district level. That is also legitimate, isn't it? It is legitimate because they control the traditional uh, setting of, mm. uh, of, of, of the districts mm. and all that. And then they have close relationship with assembly members. Mm. So let's assume somebody who is an MPP assembly member or an NDC assembly member living in a particular community. Let's assume that the majority of the people there, or maybe the, it is a stronghold of the MPP. Mm. And in a way, uh, an NDC person is elected. I believe that it's going to be a difficulty for such mm. a person to really organize those people. Mm. You, you understand? And the chiefs, because they collaborate with the assembly members, they are going to be tagged, especially if they get closer to the people. Mm. And it is very easy to do. We, we, we've seen this all over and over again. And as we even, an example is uh, this no and a yes. Then. Immediately you say you campaign for no, you are an NDC. Immediately <laughs> you campaign for yes, you are an MPP. So I think that the fear of the uh, chiefs, uh, I mean, is that at the end of the day, we are going to lose that power to mm. tell the assembly member that this is what we need to be doing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, if, I, if, I mean, the, I think that if we, if we look at the argument on the face of it, it's not all of the chiefs that are for a yes or no. And that is what exactly the problem is, where we are talking about when we allow political partisanship to go to the grassroots. These are some of the things that are going to come up. And already, we have seen it on the, from what the chiefs are saying. There are those who are clearly divided between voting for yes or no. And they all posit, you know, arguments oh, that, if, sure. depending on who you're talking to, mm -hmm. that argument makes sense. An example is, the no campaigners are saying that, for instance, vote no because it is going to deepen, if you vote yes, it's going to deepen stakeholder consultations and consensus building. And uh, also vote no because it is going to allow for the president to choose where we do not allow monocracy, which has become a part and parcel of our daily elections, to go down to the grassroots. So then it means whoever has the most money in the area is the one that is going to win, but might not necessarily be the one who is going to bring the needed development to the area. And talking about um, whoever is elected becoming the, the puppet of the government of the day, I think that we have a district uh, assembly common fund. That is some money that they can be using to undertake whichever uh, development they have to. We know consistently they complain that there is lack of, uh, the money is not readily available when they need to undertake some of these developments. And there are other funds that could be available to them. So whether an MPP person is the DC or MMDCE and an NDC uh, government is, is, is in power or vice versa, it should not directly affect whoever is elected at the grassroots. So if you're it wouldn't, it wouldn't right. affect because yeah. uh, if uh, the assembly, because that's why the assembly members are also there, they decide and then they draw their budget at the district level. It doesn't really come from the uh, national level. They do that on their own, deciding on uh, uh, projects they have to embark on and all that because they have to decide and vote on those things. So at the end of the day, it is really not going to come from the national level. They are going to do their own uh, decision. And so if so it's going to depend on uh, how many assembly members are NDC members, how many of them are NPP mm. members. And the DCE or the MCE, is he an NDC member or an NPP member? That is where the confusion is going to be. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they are going to see, okay, if it's an MPP person and he's going to execute this particular project and then we are majority, we can fight against it, yeah. just like it's happening yeah. in parliament. In the, in the parliamentary setting. All right, guys, yeah. um, that will be all for this uh, topic. We'll take a short break and return to wrap up with our final discussion. That day, Sambe Wami, but was it as simple as that? Hey, welcome back to The Stance Live here on TV3. It's our weekly program that brings together our journalists and reporters to 
also share the views and perspectives of running on running national issues. My guest in the studio tonight, Martin Isidro, he's uh, uh, an anchor here at TV3 and also co-host of Sunrise Morning Show on 3FM 92.7, as well as Godfrey Tanam. He's also a multimedia journalist here at TV3 and also our court correspondent. So, to our next subject, and it's got to do with the Auditor General, Daniel Domelevo. And he's cautioned the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Yoko, to immediately stop what he describes as illegal and unlawful investigations into alleged procurement breaches at the audit service. Daniel Domelevo is also requesting for an unqualified apology from Yoko to him and to the staff of the audit service who've been invited by Yoko. In a statement, he cited the enabling law, the Economic and Organized Crimes Act 2010, Act 804, as amended by the Office of the Special Prosecutor, Act 2017, Act 259. All right, so uh, let's talk about this briefly. Godfred, I know you've been following this matter quite strongly. What's, what do you think? I, I think the development is unfortunate uh, because uh, these are two uh, institutions that are mandated to fight uh, corruption. And uh, I, I, I think if uh, these uh, confusion should uh, come in between them, it is something that is very, very unfortunate. It is not something I believe they should, they should really uh, 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 it, should, it should get to this extent because mm. I don't. You you need to sit down and discuss what is what does the law say. That is what you have to look out for. I don't think that uh, 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 they they are ignorant of whatever the law is saying. They are, they have lawyers. If they are not lawyers themselves, they have lawyers in wherever wherever they work. So sit down, discuss. Where do you have to? To, to, to make sure that this particular issue is addressed. Mm. So if Yoko is saying that we have the power to, to investigate you, and then, uh, 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 I mean, Danny Dumelevo is saying that you don't have the power to uh, investigate me. Let's come. It's, it looks like they don't even have uh, the, uh, the, the there's, there's no friendship between them now. It's like they are, they are enemies. So you say this, I say that, and I don't know the day you, you, you come and then uh, rebut. I, I, I believe they need to really sit down and discuss. It is not a big deal. These are two grown men, I mean, let me put it that way, <laughs> who are supposed to know whatever the law says. So they shouldn't get this far. And mm -hmm. if you say that, okay, fine, it is not the Yoko, it's not Yoko that is even supposed to investigate, and it is a special prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And Yoko, you think that you are supposed to do that. Why don't you allow the special prosecutor? And mind you, this has that. got to do with uh, procurement exactly. breaches. And, and the, we're uh, told, we're told uh, there was a petition by a private citizen to Yoko, and that's what has triggered this investigation. Some feel that it is a, a kind of a payback uh, because Mr. Domelovo in times past had uh, investigated Yoko. But Martin, you know the guns say, you know, when two elders are fighting, I get, yeah. <laughs> so. Who is the, the Onupa here to, to yeah. bring some kind of... Um, I think the, 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 the constitution um, set up these two institutions, or these are two state institutions, mm. and they, they have their clearly defined roles. Although they are both anti-corruption agencies, there may be overlapping roles or responsibilities, but then they have clearly defined roles. And... The latest of the anti-corruption institutions to have been set up is that of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Mm. And if you look at the Special Prosecutors Act, Section 81, it clearly defines and talks about the role of what it should focus on. One of it has to do with procurement breaches. So you mentioned that we are here because um, a private citizen decided to petition IOKO that um, some, the pitch of the some auditor, vehicles. Yeah, the Auditor General's uh, office had um, Didn't follow procured due a procedure. number of vehicles without mm. going through the right procedure, and mm. so there have been some breaches. So this individual petitioned um, Ioko, and Ioko decided to, of course, investigate, which is uh, their mandate. Now, the special, the Auditor General is telling them that when the, set, the special prosecutor's office was set up, your power to investigate procurement breaches was taken away from you and handed to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. So if you are actually investigating me and my unit or my office on grounds of procurement breaches, then you are overstepping your authorization. Mind you, it was for authority. the same procurement breaches that the uh, former electoral commissioner lost her job. Yeah, exactly. You know, and also by a private citizen. Yes. You know, and, and you know, I mean, it's it's been in the public that a lot of people have been unhappy about the workings of the Auditor General. 
and and this is where I feel that you know I mean the, nobody's above the law. If there's if the special if the if the auditor general has done something wrong, he needs to be investigated. But he needs it needs to be done right. Yes, and he has stated that he has no problem being investigated. Absolutely. So if uh, the law uh, mm. says that the, the uh, uh, special prosecutor is the one supposed to deal with procurement breaches, mm. why don't? But you who, do that? who does Yoko respond to? Is it the attorney general? Yoko is or the the the. It's just yeah. it's an independent institution. No, but Yoko should be under either the they should be under under you know either the attorney general or uh, the interior. So interior whatever ministry. it is, I don't think they should get to where we are now. Yeah. So somebody not. should step in and, and, and break some order. It no, is not clearly. I, I mean, think the they should be able to deal with this without anybody coming in. Mm. They should yeah. be able to deal with it, guys. We've, we've there, got to go. There's we've, a clear mm. line of who should do what mm. if the grounds of this investigation is on procurement mm. uh, grounds, then I think that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is the appropriate authority to you handle this. You think so, this. based on what? No, that is what the, 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 that's the what the Special Prosecutor's Act says. Okay. That if it, it is you know, procurement breach, you know then what that even maybe they should, the go, to, maybe the they should was, go to the Supreme the Court for was that, interpretation. No, 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 the directive was that any, before the setup of the uh, Special Prosecutor mm. Office, the, when it was set up, the instruction was that any procurement breaches or mm. investigation that any institution mm. is embarking on should be mm. handed over to the mm. uh, special prosecutor. Yeah. Mm. That was the directive. Was All right, quickly, order. guys, we've got to go. What are you expecting? What are you looking out for for this week? For the rest know? of the week? Mm. I don't know. I mean, I mean... Football. Yeah, yeah, I know. certainly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, for the rest of the day, tomorrow... Uh, uh, for example, we'll be going to court. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, up yeah, we pull up. And Martin, I can speak yes. for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much for staying to us here on the stands. It came to you live from our studios here at Adisawe in Kanda. My guests have been Martin Asiru Date and Godfrey Tanam. Uh, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Enjoy the rest. Uh, the evening is gone. There's no... Bye-bye. <laughs>